One of the questions that uh, balloon pilots get a lot is, well, how do you control where you're going? Or can you control where you're going since you don't have a steering wheel? So balloonists actually use the wind con to control where we go. So there's different um, wind kind of um, layers at each different height. So you may have a layer on the ground that's going a little bit south at two or three miles an hour. At six or 800 feet, you may have another one that's going a little bit southwest at six or eight miles an hour. And then up high, maybe at two or 3,000 feet, it may be going a little bit north or southeast or a different direction at a higher speed as well, or sometimes even a slower speed. So balloon pilots go up and down in order to catch different layers of wind in order to change the direction. Now it's not totally random. Uh, what happens is when you first, right before you launch a balloon in the morning, you put up what's called a pie ball. Now a pie ball is basically a helium balloon that we fill up and we let it go. Now as we watch it as it goes up into the air, we notice that it goes up at about three to 400 feet per minute. So what we do is we track both the direction and the wind speed, and that'll let us know what the winds are doing aloft. Now the ground, obviously, we're able to see which way the wind is going from the direction that the trees may be blowing, if there's the leaves may be moving, or originally when we set off that first helium balloon of the pie ball. Now, once it gets up to about 1,000 or 2,000 feet, you'll notice more directional changes. A lot of times where we fly in the Enumclaw Valley just south of Seattle, we notice the pie ball first will go a little bit south, and then it'll go pretty straight north up until about 800 to 1,000 feet. Now, once it reaches 3,000 feet, we notice that the pie ball goes directly south. What that tells us is that once we get up into the air, we can get up to about 800 feet and go south all the way over to the Green River, and then once we're done playing the Green River, can pop up to 3,000 feet and come all the way back south into the valley. Now, the upper winds are typically going to stay consistent, whereas as the sun continues to hit the ground and warm it up, called convection heating, we'll start to change the wind on the ground. Now, while we're in the air, we also need to see what direction and how fast the wind is going beneath us. So we use a very technical technique where we either will take some wood shavings or... Um, some pilots will use shaving cream or sometimes they'll spit out of the bath over the basket and as it comes down they'll notice it'll go to the left or the right and, uh, and the speed it's going in the direction. That allows us to change direction by going either ascending right, or descending in altitude. Now the other pieces that we use for control is, is if you think about like a river and in a river if you were to send a, a stick down and there's two rocks like this, well, what's gonna happen is that the current goes in between the rocks. So the same thing happens in valleys, right? Or in small canyons, or even in between, you know, large groups of trees where the wind will be funneled through. And that allows us to get to, for good pilots, to be able to read the surface and be able to change direction and find out exactly where they wanna land or use that to find the exact location that they want to put the balloon down. Now, I would say that, you know, being able to control a hot air balloon in your exact landing spot is much more of an art than it is a science. It takes a lot of skill, but eventually you start to learn the topography and the different outflows and inflows in the valley, and it helps us become fantastic balloon pilots. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into how hot air balloon pilots control the direction that we go.